standing today and let's lift our voice to the Lord. Can we do that, those that can, and give God glory and honor as we welcome him into this place? God, you are great. You are the mighty God, and we praise you. We exalt you and lift you up. Go ahead. Do, go ahead. Continue that praise unto him today. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Lord, we give you praise into this place today. You are welcome here, God. Your presence is welcome here. Your kingship is welcomed here. Be Lord of all, God. Be Lord of everything in our lives today. Set your throne among us, God, that we may worship and honor you. Bow before you today that we might see you do great things in our lives, Lord, in our midst, in our homes, in our family, in our church, in our world. In the name of Jesus, man, the Lord is here today. Why don't you take a moment, clap your hands, and welcome unto him. Glad that he has joined us. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Today is the day we want to take a moment to honor our uh, veterans that have ser served our country and, and their countries today. Um, November 11th is Veterans Day. And this is the day, the Sunday prior, that we take time to express our appreciation to those who have served in the armed forces and uh, who have given themselves um, on behalf of us. It's good to see Gary coming in today. I've been praying for him. So glad that he is here and his family, Del Ann, as well, Phelan and Thank you. And Maggie, I can thank. But we want to take a moment to thank those who have uh, served in the armed forces of the United States, uh, in our Army and our Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard. And, uh, um, you know, the way we feel is that even with everything that has been declared wrong with our country, I am still very proud to be an American. I'm thankful to have been born. I'm thankful to have been born in this land of the free and the home of the brave. I still believe it's the greatest country on earth. And um, it's our freedoms that make it what it is, make it so. And those freedoms, we can't never forget, were won by people and defended by our veterans, the men and women who put their ideals uh, and the ideals of our country um, before their personal gain. So we want to take a moment here today and honor all of those who served. We again want to say thank you. I know there, um, there are a host that are not able to be with us today, but we do want to recognize them and say thank you. Thank you for, um, for protecting us, and we say God bless you for that. Thank you for being willing to put uh, yourself in harm's way, as they say, and to offer yourself as a sacrifice for this country it, to help keep it free. And for that, we are forever in, in, indebted to you. And Bethel Apostolic Church wants to say thank you today. Would you give them a great round of applause? applause? And as you are standing, I would like to introduce them to you and invite them up to the front here. We do have a small gift of appreciation. Um, we hope that it expresses a very sincere appreciation and say thank you for what you have done.
done in the time you have served. And so we invite to the front from the U.S. Army, long-standing Tom Butts. And those that are not able to be with us today, Kevin Forbes, Walter Frazier, Jay Meyer, Mick Wagner, I don't believe he is here today, and, and now serving Corbin Smith, the U.S. Army. And from the United States Air Force, Wes Haining. From the United States Navy, Diana Apostolakos. There is Mick. Mick was in the back. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And from the United States Marine, I, is, is Brother Herman with us today in the back? Somebody wave at me back there if he's... If he is here, he is here. We give honor to David Herman if he wants to join us. If not, we will present him with our gift. United States Marine David Herman and Jared Seifert. And we also recognize new member of our church who is now a United States citizen, but in the past, or is also a Jamaican citizen, but spent 23 years in the military in the Jamaica, in Jamaica, and we honor him today for his service to his country. Lloyd Bloomfield. And we want to give honor uh, posthumously to the U.S. Army, Dan Hope, Carol Kress, Gene Rimler, Don Wright, Bob Wright, the National Guard, those who have worshipped with us, Nolan Wilson, and from the United States Navy, Danny Wagner, Bob Wright, and Lou Guido. Would you give them a hand in honor of them and their families? And I would also say, if there is anyone that we have missed today, would you please let us know that? Come forward, please, if we have missed. We think we've got everybody. But if not, we want to make sure that we give you honor today. And so, again, we say thank you. God bless you. And uh, may the Lord God bless America. One more hand of appreciation. Oh, God, bless America, the land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prayer. White with food, God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my. So our prayer today. So good to have you in the house of the Lord, each and every one of you. Good to have our guests with us today. Thank you for coming. Turn around, greet somebody, wave, tell them hello, however it is appropriate for you to greet them. God bless you. We're entering into a time of worship. So good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Lift your voice in praise and worship unto the Lord. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, 
and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things. Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts who serve him, doing his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. God, we bless you today, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. And bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like that. Worship your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. And sing like never before. Your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing oh ten thousand reasons for my heart to find oh and bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul oh Worship his holy name, sing like, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Sing, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, I worship.
you, Jesus. God, we bless you, Lord. God, we worship you, Jesus. God, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
And Jesus is in this room here right now, here right now, making this place I stand, holy ground, holy ground. God, we worship you, Jesus. This is holy ground. Come on, let's worship him. Let's thank him for his presence that we feel here today. Come on, let's worship him. We're in a holy place today. His presence is here. His presence is here. That makes us a holy place. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. For we are standing, standing on holy ground. Come on, recognize where we on are today. Holy ground. In the presence of the Most High God. And I know that there are angels all around. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for the heavenly host that is here right now. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. Jesus now. Yes, we do right now. For we are standing in his presence on holy ground. I have come today because we have just such a great number of names that we are going to give God attention to today in prayer. Amen. Gary, it's good to have you here with us. We've been praying for you and continue to pray for your back problems and thanking God for that touch, but we're praying continued for this need. Amen. Sister Barbara is in our prayers. Sister Barbara Bruner, as well as Jamie her daughter, and Michael, her son. We need to pray for these needs. Um, praying for Sister Grace's mother. That God will continue to help in that need and bring healing. Amen. And maybe her family as well. I haven't got to talk to you today. Uh, asking God to help. Um, Sister Sandy has been sick this week. We're praying and uh, asking God to help her. Uh, Tommy and Cricket Butts. Uh, are both sick. Tommy tested positive for COVID and um, uh, doing well, but we're asking God for, for his touch in that situation in their family. Uh, Sister Butts's brother, Sharon, Sister Sharon Butts's brother, Charles, um, is doing very poorly still, needs a touch. We're praying for him and for Sister Sharon, as well as Sister Julie Forbes's father, Bob Bayless, uh, this is Bill Bayless and Sister Edna Wagner's brother um, in very much need of prayer. Um, both believed to be suffering from COVID. Uh, praying for Frank. This is Judy, George's brother, and continuing to pray for Judy, George, that God would, would help her as well. And for her brother now, Frank, who they uh, are believing has suffered a stroke and asking God to help there. Uh, the Todd Edwards family, we're praying for them today. They are home. Um, Todd's w supervisor, uh, Vance, praying for him as well, uh, was tested and positive. So they sent Todd and his family home from work, or Todd home from work, and he's with his family today. So Vance, we're praying for him today, uh, as well as Brooke's mother and sister, her mother Nancy and her sister Michaela, need a touch from the Lord. Brother Brown's daughter, his baby, is having a baby. And so uh, Ash, it's Ashley, is Nicole. Nicole is at the hospital now. So we're praying for this family uh, and another grandbaby born into it, asking God to be with them. Um, brother and sister Seaman are in the back. Um, 
glad that they are here with us today. And we are praying for them. Let somebody say amen. Um, Brother Seaman has lost no more than three friends, no less than three friends this week. Um, and lost a, a mentor and friend in his life. Brother Crawford Coon passed away this morning. Uh, Brother Baxter passed away earlier in the week, and Brother uh, Freed passed away, I believe, on Thursday. And um, him and Sister Seaman are losing a lot of friends, and that's a hard place to be. And so we're praying for them as well as Sister Seaman, that God would help them. And we are being made aware, I don't know all the details, but I've been made aware that there might be several people at Truth Tabernacle that are sick and needing prayer and so we are praying for them and that doesn't even include the needs that you have here today there's a lot i'm not going to hurry this time of prayer today we're going to take a moment we're going to sing and we're going to worship and god has heard us in each and every one of these requests and there are more we're praying for brother clark we're praying for sister edna sister cress um, seems like there's another name that i want to mention Sister Shirley Ban, uh, Brand Shutter, that's the name. Thank you. God will help them. Yes, if you have a special need. Um, God knows, doesn't he? God knows, and so many others. So let's just take a moment here before we go any further. And um, I think we're still praying for Sonny, your uncle, that God would touch him as well. I want to call that name out. God is, we're in the throne room of God. His presence is here to meet and supply those needs. If you have a special need, you need prayer, please come. We will anoint you and pray over you, believing God to meet that need. Let's call upon him now. Let's take a moment. Remember all the names that you can and ask God to touch them now. God, we have presented all of these in time and in patience to you who is not weary, Lord. You're not wearied by any of this, and you're not overcome by any of it, God. It's heavy upon our hearts, Lord. It's a heavy burden, a prayer even to bear, and of, of sorrow and grief. But you are the strength of our heart, the strength of our life. God, you are the healer, and we trust you in that. And we present these needs, so many before you, and so many that we haven't even mentioned, Lord, and ask you to supply them according to your riches that are in glory, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, meet them, I pray, Lord. Meet them, I pray. You're the healer, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your touch. I continue to ask upon Brother Gary, upon Sister Barbara and her family, upon Sister Wagner, Lord, and Brother Wagner. In the name of Jesus, upon Tommy and Cricket, Lord. And Upon Charles, in the name of Jesus, we plead your blood for healing in their lives. We need a miracle, God. We need a miracle, oh God. For Sister Massengill's sister, oh God. For their granddaughter, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. For Bob, Lord. For Julie and her family. For the Bayless family, oh God. For the George family reality, oh God, that is now needing a touch Jesus in his body. Now. For the Edwards family, Lord, the extended family, and now, Lord, this for one that supervises and works and looks over, I pray for your touch in his life. His Jesus, you're the healer. You're the healer. God, I pray that you would encourage brother and sister Seaman today, God. Carry this burden for them. Be a lifter, oh God of their spirits to the power of the name of Jesus bring encouragement God don't let this spirit of overwhelming overtake them God oh Lord we resist it now in your name Jesus we resist it in your name Jesus we resist it in your name God hallelujah be with the Brown family today God let their joy continue and be fulfilled now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God, for true tabernacle in that church family. 
Lord, I pray healing into that family, Lord. I pray it in your name, Jesus. I pray it in the name of Jesus. In the blessed name of Jesus. In the blessed name of Jesus. For Claire Bewley, Lord, I pray your strength in her body, healing. God we need you oh God for every need in this building right now Lord both great and small we call upon you we need you Lord Oh God, no you're my Savior. Can find your world you're my provider. I need no salvation, God. I need salvation, no oh God, and deliverance. Touch you like I need provision, Jesus. Lord. We need healing today. We need no strength. One can touch you like Jesus can. No one can give you peace. You cannot understand. No one can touch you. No one can find your wounds with nail scarred hands. No one just lift can a hand to the Lord and receive like that from the Lord Jesus now. Recognize who our help comes from. No one. No one can, can touch you like Jesus. No one can give you peace You cannot understand No one can find your wounds With nail-scarred hands No one can touch you like Jesus can Man, in the corner over here, the platform of the boxes that we are sending out to families and to children around the world with a token of hope, a blessing from us to them, and uh, we're praying that God can use this as an opportunity to minister to their need in their life. So would you pray a blessing upon them as they go forth? And we don't know who is going to receive them, but I pray now that God's light would shine into their heart and their life. They might find hope in a hopeless world, in a hopeless situation. God, I bless the efforts of everyone that is here and has given so many and such a large token, Lord. A blessing is now being offered. and It's a ray of hope, Lord, and I know... I know that the message that is going forth is but the beginning in their life. And so I ask you, Lord, to lead and guide into all truth. I pray, Lord, that they might find you in this and find that you are the God that loves and the God that saves. In the name of Jesus, let truth be revealed, Lord, that hope is not in this world, but our hope is in you. Hope is not in the things of this world, but our hope is in you, the eternal blesser, in the name of Jesus. And I pray your blessing upon everyone that is given to this, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated.
when storm clouds come my way. For I have placed my trust in you and you alone. And still I will trust you. Still I will follow. Still the storm rages on and I can't find my way still I will trust you Lord lift your hands and sing with us still I will trust
stand to your feet. Let's sing that again, Brittany. Still I will trust. Make that your song right here, right now. Still I will trust you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then I'm reading from Psalm 91 and verse number 2. Thank you for your continued giving in the offerings as you come and go. God bless you as you continue to support the kingdom of God. I invite you to join us Wednesday night for Bible study. We open the word of the Lord and teach the word of the Lord. We are here from 7 o'clock and most normally we are done by 8 and uh, encourage you to come and hear the word of the Lord we've been teaching in the thought of getting off of the bottle and getting into the meat and looking at some things that will help us grow in the kingdom of God and that God has as far as expectations for you and for me if you're a disciple of his, things that he expects of us. And we are going to be accountable for that one day, so I encourage you to come and be a part of that. Wednesday night at 7. Psalm 91 and verse number 2. I uh, ask Brittany and the praise team to sing this song as we enter into our time of the word of the Lord today. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. Somebody say, my God. In Him will I, will I trust. Pastor and Sister Nancy Arrowwood will be ministering in our service next Sunday. They've written a number of books, and um, I think that they would help you if you would want to pick one of them up next week. I've encouraged them to bring a number of their books along for purchase, and uh, I encourage you to take as many as you can. It's good Christian writing. Some are novels, some are uh, a compilation of letters and such, and others are just good Bible teaching that will help you. Um, so we look forward to them being with us next week. One of the stories that is in the opening of one of his books is always something that I have uh, found um, helpful, if not humorous. And he writes in that book about a man who was walking along a steep cliff one day and he fell off of the cliff, got too close and fell over the edge. And as he was falling, he grabbed a branch and was hanging on for dear life. And uh, no way for him to climb back up. No way because it was too far down to let go. And realizing that he was in trouble, he began to holler and to scream, Somebody help me! Is there anybody up there that can help me? Please, somebody throw a rope down or something. Do something to help me. And I don't know how long he cried out, but after a while... Uh, he heard a voice, and the voice said, Well, just let go, and I'll catch you. And he said, Well, who is that up there? And he said, It's the Lord. Just let go, and I'll catch you. And the man thought about it for a moment, and he said, Is there anybody else up there? Is that you today? <laughs> is that you today? One of the greatest questions of life is who are you going to trust? And the unique thing about life is that is your choice to make. Let's pray together. God, help us now as we go forward here today. Your word is forever 
settled it's true and just pray that you would help us pray that you'd help us oh God today one more time to make a right choice still I will trust you Lord still I will trust you amen and everybody say in Jesus name you may be seated who who are you going to trust the choice is yours to make and and the answer and the way you answer the question is is ultimately going to determine i believe whether you're happy or miserable whether you succeed or you fail or uh, whether you make something out of your life or you waste it who are you going to trust should should you trust should we trust um, popular opinion you know, this may may not be a good idea in my opinion since and that's not the popular one since opinions constantly change and most definitely the popular opinion should you trust celebrities who um, help set the latest trends I'd say no because you know what trends do Trends change. They change all the time. It's constantly changing. Fads come and go. Um, should we make critical decisions based upon what social media or the news outlets offer? And, and again, I say probably not. Well, what about yourself? Should you trust yourself? Should you trust yourself? You know, people, some people say, I don't trust anybody. I don't trust anybody but myself. I'm the only one that I trust. And I'd, I'd ask them how that's working out for them right now, <laughs> you know, because you know, God warns us about leaning to our own understanding, doesn't he? And the truth is, is that our emotions can lie to us, and that's why we have to be careful about trusting us. We've been studying a little bit on our Wednesday night Bible study and, and talking about the heart this past week and how it's deceitful, the Bible says in Jeremiah, above all things, it's desperately wicked. Who can know it? When we live by our emotions, they will manipulate us, won't they? They got a way of just messing us up because even our emotions can be changed by people or we're changed by the mood that we find ourselves in. And, and, uh, and, and I would offer to us again that if you're going to entrust your life and your future to someone or something, that you ought to choose someone that, that has your best interest at heart. You ought to choose someone that has the knowledge of everything, that knows everything. You ought to choose someone that is, that is perfect in every way. You ought to choose someone that will never lie or deceive you. And, and that kind of whittles it down and narrows it down and kind of limits the option in reality when we put that as a precursor in there to just the fact that if you're going to trust somebody, you ought to trust God. I think we understand that that. No one is ever going to always tell us the truth. No one's ever going to do that. We, we found that to be uh, so obvious in the past few years. They're going to shade it. They're going to filter it. They're going to um, make it sound nice. Um, they tell you what you want to hear. But can I tell you that what you need to hear is truth? You need to hear truth because truth is what sets you free. You want to be set free? Truth is what sets you tree, free. Um, lies about yourself, lying to yourself, or lies about you and lies about others or lies about the world that we are in is a, is a method and it's a means to keep us in in, in the dark, first of all, but it's also a means of keeping us in bondage. And we understand that, that lies are a type and, and, and an aspect of bondage, that lies will keep us in bondage, or otherwise we'd have nothing to be set free from by the truth. But Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. you got to have the truth if you want to be free. Somebody say Amen. And it is. It always is amazing how much easier it is and amazing how 
much easy uh, it is to, to receive and believe the lies that we hear. It doesn't matter where they originate from. It can originate from others. It can originate from, from anywhere. It can re- originate in our own heart. But instead of trusting in God's truth, the lie is believed. Why is that? Why is it? Here's my opinion, and I believe it's a biblical one. It's because the truth will set you free. But first, it makes you miserable. Truth makes you miserable. We don't like the truth. Truth often hurts. Truth pierces to the very heart of the matter. We don't want to hear it. Most often, we don't want truth. But the truth is that most of the problems that we face in our life are brought on to us by the poor decisions that we make in life. Poor choices. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that it's our own stubbornness and our own ego and our own insecurities that cause the stress that we are in and under, but it's true. Pilate once asked the question to Jesus, maybe the most important question a person could ever ask. He said, what is truth? What, what, what is truth? That question is still being asked today. Isn't that amazing? 2,000 years later, it's still being asked today. The reason that it's being asked today is because today, even today, like, 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 like it was in the day of Pilate, so many people choose to ignore truth. You know, Pilate ignored truth even though it was standing right in front of him. So obvious, and yet he ignored it. Jesus made it very simple, made it very plain when he said, I am the way, I am the truth. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You know, and and you hear it. There's people out there everywhere. I got a famous quote from a non-Christian that once remarked, all you Bible thumpers are like, you are the only ones that know the truth. I'm here to tell you that if you believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, then I would have to say, well, yes, I do. And yes, we do, because the truth is, is this. His name is Jesus. Jesus is the source of all truth. He's the source of all truth. Jesus is dependably correct in all matters. Jesus is the reality that we have to conform to. And since Jesus is the truth, he is the most reliable source for truth. Many times, routinely it seems in his writings or in his teachings, I should say, that are recorded in the Word of God, he would begin his his topic or his lesson by saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you. What he was saying was, I tell you the truth. John also said in 17 and 17 that the Word is truth. He said, Thy Word is truth. John said in chapter 1, in verse number 1, he said, In the beginning was truth. Here's a truth for you. In the beginning was truth. He went on in verse 14 and said, And the truth, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's why Jesus, who was God robed in flesh, could stand and say, I am the way, I am truth. So I say to us today, don't don't act shocked. We shouldn't be shocked that that truth is so elusive today. That truth is, is something that nobody wants to hear. That truth is something that is seldom found. And truth is something that is seldom sought after. Because I believe that the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist is among us. And the Bible says it already works 
among us. And the spirit of Antichrist is the spirit of error. It's the spirit of error. The spirit of untruth, of lies. It, 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 it's a very simple. It's, it's not difficult. It's not a difficult deduction to make. That if you accept the premise that Jesus is truth. Anybody believe that? That if he is truth, then anything that is opposed to him is opposed to truth. Therefore, it's an error. It's a lie. Psalm chapter 33. The psalmist said the Lord is truthful. He can be trusted. He can be trusted. I don't want to offend you today. But God isn't waiting on your opinion He's not waiting on my opinion. He's not waiting on anyone else's opinion. He's not waiting on us to figure out what is going on or what's wrong or what's right. What we can stand on and what we can be assured of is that if God says it, it is true. We can also stand upon the fact that if God said it, we can trust it. You can trust trust God. The one thing I learned many years ago in my life as a young man, I came to a realization and I stood up on it as a foundation that if God said it, I could trust it. And if God settled it, said it, then that settled it for me. It doesn't matter whether I believed it, I understood it, I could grasp it, I, I, could, I could hold on to it. It doesn't matter. If God said it, that settled it. I believed it to be true. There is such thing still as an absolute truth. For the Bible says that his word is forever settled in heaven. If he said it and it's true, it is forever truth. And the word of God says that heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. It didn't just say that once. It doesn't doesn't just say that twice. But three times in the word of God, it is recorded that heaven and earth shall pass away. Let me tell you today that if it's in the word of God, it is settled in heaven forever. As long as there will be a heaven, God's word will remain forever, O Lord, the psalmist said. As long as heaven lasts, thy word is settled. How many know? How many know that you can trust the Lord in every situation? How many of you really know that you can trust God in every situation of life? I'm waiting on a resounding witness. Okay? Have you tried God? Have you seen God to work in your life? See, somebody sitting beside you may not know this and understand this yet. May not have grown in a relationship with God to where they can say, I, I, I know it's dark and I know it's hard and I know the storm is raging and I know my health is bad and my finances are bad and, and I know things look maybe difficult and I don't understand what's going on and I don't know what's all ahead and boy, it's a rough day and it's a rough time. Buddy, let me tell you, it's been a rough year. But is there anybody that can say that though the storm rages on, I can still stand on the promises of God? That I have found him to be a God that is able to be trusted in every situation. I can trust God. Is there anybody that knows beyond the shadow of a doubt that he is a God that never fails and a God that you can trust regardless of your situation? Okay. I'm going to try this together now. If you know, if you know, and you are convinced in your heart, and I, I know it's a, one of those Sundays, evidently, where we're tired. One of those Sundays where the preacher is not preaching the, 
the Rip Snorton one. It's going to get you up on your feet. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds of it, okay? When you can show what your heart knows by just clapping your hands, shouting, lifting your hand. Hang on, wait a minute. We're going to do this together. Hold on in the back. I heard you. Okay. But if you know that God, the God that you serve, is trustworthy, that he's not going to fail you, he's not going to leave you, he's not going to lie to you, he's always going to be there, he's always going to help you, he's always going to do what he is dependably, dependably honest. If you know that in your heart, all right, now's your chance. Clap your hands and lift your voice. Shout it. Shout it. Shout it. Come on. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know that I can trust you in everything. I know that you are faithful. Hallelujah. God, you've never failed me. God, you've never left me. God, you've never done harm to me. God, you've always been there beside me. God, when I couldn't see, you saw. When I couldn't know, you knew. When I couldn't provide, you blessed. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know I can trust you, Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I know, I know. I know, and that's, a, that's something that is a battle that you've got to conquer in your life and get to a place in your life that, wow, even when you're bombarded, you know it. I didn't come today to ask you if you know that. Because... When I look around, those of you that are here, I, I believe that you do. The question I bring to you, however, is even though you know that you can trust God, my question is, can you trust Him in everything? And I, I believe that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you, that he is a trustworthy God. That he is a God that will never fail. I believe you know that, but do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you can trust him? See, knowing and choosing are different. You may know, but can you choose to do that today? You may know that you can trust him, but today, can you trust him? Today, will you choose to trust him? Jesus, in, in the middle of his uh, greatest sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, he says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. And he was saying, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has got enough worries for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each, each day, we don't need to add to our trouble today by worrying about tomorrow. You see, you have, and, and I have a limited capacity. I don't, I don't have an infinite capacity to carry problems. I, I have a limited capacity, and God understands that. And that's why He says, You don't need to try and carry tomorrow's trouble. You don't need to try and carry yesterday's trouble because each day has enough trouble in and of its own. <laughs> if you borrow from yesterday's trouble and you borrow from tomorrow's trouble, can I tell you that you're going to have too much to carry in a New York minute? That's why we are so frequently overwhelmed. 
Because we have trouble, not, not just from today, but we have problems from yesterday and, and we have problems that we're bringing from tomorrow. And that's a terrible place to be. It's a terrible place to be. We're living in the present. Somebody say the present. This is where we should be spending our time. This is where we should be focused here today. Not about what happened yesterday. Not about what's going to happen tomorrow. But what is happening right here, right now. You need to be focusing your life this moment on the present. Because each day, each day has enough trouble on its own. Wow, that's a great message right there. It's why we have to stay in the present. There's nothing I can do about yesterday. Fretting about tomorrow is not going to change tomorrow. You know what does help me? The choices that I make today. Somebody say today. Are staying in the present. Giving ourselves to, to what you can address today. This is what makes a difference in your life. Jesus is telling us. Stay focused on the moment. Stay focused on today. Because worrying about tomorrow is going to choke your choices that you're going to make in the moment today, worry chokes out your choosing today to walk by faith. Worry about tomorrow chooses, uh, 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 chokes out your choices about what you can and what you cannot count on God to do in your life. And I am here to say to us today that while I may not know what tomorrow holds, I do know who holds tomorrow. And you can today choose to trust God, you can sit here right now in this building, in the house of God, and I bet you, maybe that's not the right thing to say. <laughs> I, I could do whatever the equivalent is that's not sinning. <laughs> Challenge you today to look back over your life and ask yourself how many times you got robbed of the present. In the house of God, the present, the moment in the house of God because of something that happened last night or something that's going to happen tomorrow. Can I tell you that we need to be in today, today, because there's so many things that you can't control in your life. You can't control your health. You might get sick tomorrow. You might. Get a report tomorrow that you have cancer or heart disease. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. I, I tell you, you can make a good choice today to live healthy. I can make good health choices today. Somebody say today. You've heard me say it before. Let me say it again. You, you can't control your family. You can't control their future. Your children. They may rebel against God. They, they may choose to walk away from God. There's no magic formula. You've heard me say that, that you know, I, I've seen parents that do everything right and their children leave and walk away. I, I've, I've seen parents that do nothing right and their children stay. <laughs> Can't control your family's future. The best thing you can do is put them in the right place Teach them the right way of God today. You control what you are doing today. Somebody say today. You can't control your financial future. We're worried about the future. What's it going to do to the economy? What's it? You don't have any control over that. But what you can do is make a good choice today. Make wise decisions about your finances today. I've seen people. Put a lifetime into building their finances. To it to be gone in a heartbeat. You have no control over it. The best that you can do is make a good choice today. You want to invest in something? Invest in the kingdom of God. God's economy. Can I tell you that God's economy has never seen a depression? God's economy has never seen a slowdown. Pay your tithes. 
give ridiculously in the offerings, crazy, support the kingdom of God, support world missions, local missions. That's what you can do today. That's what you have control of today. You can't control the environmental future. I can't control. We're, 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 we're too easily stressed out about things we don't have control over. I don't have a control over the moral environment in our society, the moral culture of our society. World, what in the world's going on? What's going on out there? Can you control that? Can I control that? I believe the world's gone. It's gone to hell in a handbasket. It's crazy stuff. But can I tell you what I do believe also? I believe that today is a great day for the church. Because we really do have the answer. We still have the answer for the world today. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And while I may not have any control over what's going to happen in our world morally in the future, I can make a choice today that will affect our world. For he said, you are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. And that is something that we can be today. Today. I'm not trying to control the future through my worry, my anxiety. But I'll tell you something. What I've realized is that much of my problems, much of my struggle related to the fact that I can't get on and I can't stay on today. I can't get on and I can't stay on the present. And I believe there are three questions that God would ask us today. The church. Do you believe that I care for you? Do you believe that I can help you? And do you believe that I am always working for your good? And I think the real question Is will you choose today to trust me? Now you may know you can trust him. But will you choose to trust him? What about today? While you are sitting right here in this room. In the presence of God. What are you going to do? It really is your choice. It really is your choice. Joshua said to the people and pulled them together when they had a choice to make. And he said, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. The apostle said, I've heard written in the, the prophet that I've heard thee in a time that is accepted. It's an acceptable time. And in the day of salvation, I've heard thee. For now is the acceptable time. Now is a good time. Now, the day, somebody say today, is the day of salvation. What do, you have, what do you have in your life that you need from God? You need salvation? Will you trust him to save you? 
Are you, are you trusting him to save you? To deliver you from eternal damnation? Are, are, are you trusting him for your healing, for your provision? Are, are you trusting him for today? I think it's a decision that we all have to make. God gave us this incredible, and I'm asking the worship to come back as we close. God gave us this incredible, incredible ability to choose. And it's a choice in our lives that we are to make every day that we live. Every day. There's an old song we used to sing. Many of it, you will know it. There's many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. Stand with me if you would. Let's talk to the Lord for just a moment here. I'm going to call you to a decision. I believe the word of God would do that today. Call you to make a decision. How are you going to go from this point on? I know you've chosen in the past. I know you've made that choice. But I want us to come to the realization again in our lives that today is another day. And being another day in this heart of mine that is so easily deceived and it is so wicked when there's so many influences that are manipulated by the spirit of the Antichrist that is prevalent in our world. So many that have gained entrance into your heart and into my life. You can know that God can save you, but never make the choice to allow him to. You can, you can know that he is able to provide for you, but not choose to trust him for his provision today. It's not what you know, but it's the choices that we make every day that we live so today I choose to repent before God today I choose to bow my heart before him and I choose to call upon him to save me again to be my savior today today I choose I choose See, it's a choice I choose to walk to an altar to bow my knee at a pew to bow my head in reverence I choose that I choose to submit and say, God, not only do I know that I trust you, that you are trustworthy, God, but I choose to do it, to put my faith and trust in you, to not lean into my own understanding. Don't let, don't let anxiety, don't let worry, don't let it choke out your choice today. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Trust in the Lord with everything that is within you. Say this day like the psalmist, the Lord, he, he is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God in him. Take a moment, let's talk to the Lord, would you? Come on, make a good choice. Stay focused upon today. Stay focused upon this moment. In the name of Jesus, Come on, take a moment. Still I will trust you, Lord. Still I will trust you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord Jesus. On, put aside the things in that you've been putting your trust in. The Cast them down today. 
choose the Lord. He is God. right now are going is there anybody else up there Any, anybody anybody else somebody throw me a rope is what we know we can trust him sometimes we find it hard to make the decision to trust him I find it interesting. We find that story so funny. And do you know why we find it funny? Because every one of us can relate to it. When he was hanging by a thread, almost all hope was gone. The one that he knew he could trust showed up. couldn't trust him. He made a choice to look somewhere else. There, get that little rascal that's sitting beside you that <laughs> you're having trouble with. See, this is it. We're going to do, do the obvious demonstration today. Come up here, Eston.
Tell him to jump into your arms. Just jump, Eston. Just jump. Just it, it's that childlike faith that just says, I'm losing control. And I know if I let go, as he has said, if I'll come to an altar like he has called, I'll lift up my eyes like he has asked. He's trustworthy. Come on, somebody. Somebody hear the voice of God as he speaks into your life and tells you what you need to do to trust him today. Whether it be for healing, whether it be for your loved one's salvation, whether it be for salvation in your life. Come on, God can be trusted. Let God be God. Let every other God be alive. Go. The throne. Let God. I will trust in you alone. Empty, empty every other throne. Trust in I you. will trust in you alone. In the power of the only name that saves. Oh, Break every chain, break every chain, break 
chain, break every chain. So empty every other throne, for I will trust in you alone, in the power of the only name that saves. and close your eyes, would you? I made this statement on made this statement on Wednesday night that talk is cheap. It's, it's talk's cheap. It's what you do. We can all agree that we know that God is trustworthy. The question is not what we know, it's what we can do. Can you trust Him? Close your eyes if you wouldn't bow your heads. I'm going to ask Ask if you're finding yourself saying, I hear you, Pastor. I, hear, I know what you're saying, and I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm hurting. I'm, I'm on that rope. I'm wanting to let go, but I'm finding it hard to do today. I want you to just lift your hand up. I want to pray with you. I don't know your situation. Thank you. Anybody else today? I, I just I, I know what's going on, and I just want, I want, I want to get to that place to where I can. I can. Father, he stands ready to catch us when we put it in his hands, knowing that we can trust him. So now, God, for every hand that was raised in the front and in the back, I ask you to help, Lord. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to do it, God. And I pray that you would help not only them, but I pray that you would help us as a church and Lord, me even as a pastor to again today to not let, not let the things and the worries of tomorrow choke out my choice today. Worry and anxiety, it'll do that. It'll choke us. Causing us not being able to make good choices. So God, I pray. I pray, Lord, and I choose today. I choose to trust you for the things that I cannot control. For the things, Lord, that you have taken out of my control. I trust you to do what is right. And I trust you, Lord, to always do what is good. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, still. I'm going to trust you, Jesus. There's peace and there's assurance in that church. Relinquishing to you, God, the things that I cannot deal with and I can't control. Sufficient for today or its worries. And I can't find my way. One more time to the Lord. Still I will trust you. Still I will follow. Still I will listen to your every calling. Though the storm Rages on, and I can't find my way. Still, I will trust you, Lord. God, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for this day, and I know it's been lengthy, Lord, but. chosen today to hear your word, to listen to your voice. Help us, Lord. 
Help us, Lord, today. I know that you will because you're a God that hears. I know you will because you're a God that cares. You're a God of love. You're a strong tower that we have ran into, Lord. Let your peace be upon us. Let your blessing abide within us. In the name of Jesus, thank you to all that are here. Thank you to our guests that are here today. God bless you. Dana, it's good to see you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can trust him. You can trust him.